by this warm welcome. And I'm deeply honored that you've given me the opportunity to address Congress a second time. Mr. Vice President, do you remember the time that we were the new kids in town? <laughs> and I do see a lot of old friends here. And I see a lot of new friends of Israel here as well. Democrats and Republicans alike. Israel has no better friend than America, and America has no better friend than Israel. We stand together. Israel and America, best friends. Well, we can see that, can't we? I don't know how to make my stare. We go. Israel and America, best friends. So we're going to start off for the first few minutes here talking about free speech. Because, uh, well, we're on YouTube right now. And I don't know if any of you have noticed, but it uh, seems like it's kind of hard to say some things on YouTube. I don't know if you're old enough, but I am. I remember when YouTube started. There actually was stuff that you could find that was, you know, not uh, fact-checked by, you know, uh, the Orwellian uh, governments of our world. Um, but boy, oh boy, over the last several years, it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. And free speech, let's see, let's see. In Germany, it isn't even just American in scope. Well, the, the swastika, funny enough, which is a symbol of unity. It's a beautiful symbol, the swastika. Yes, it is. I've always loved it. I can say that, can I? <laughs> can I say that I love this? Yes, I do. And I love what it stands for. And I love the man who picked it for his national flag as well. Yes, I said that. and But I didn't say it, did I? Because we have to play this little game, right? There's certain things you can say. Like I could say that, um, wow, some pe I could post things in the form of a question. There's a great content creator especially if you're an american leather apron club what he does from a philosophical point of view is he poses questions and that's his way of avoiding the censorship by what if america and israel being best friends is enticing or encouraging american sons and daughters to go off to fight wars for Israel. We're starting to play with some ground there, but there's some things, for instance, about Judaism that may not be acceptable. Uh, but I think there's pretty much open game for like Islam and definitely Christianity. There's a lot of haters out there. Um, but when you start delving into hating one particular religion, it becomes uh, uh, problematic. Maybe that's something to do with who owns the media and um well hollywood and all these things i mean if i started telling you right now honestly and backing it up with facts i believe that, that do they call that what is it anti-semitism i think is that it i think so pretty sure uh so truth is anti-semitic in this modern world where America and Israel are best buddies, best buddies. Ironically, you need to go to the Israeli press to get a lot of stuff that you will never get here. Because funny enough, over there, they speak quite honestly with themselves because they're special. They're chosen. They, they choose each other to do that. They're very chosen in every way, and in their own minds at least. And so... Hararetz did an article uh, about me years ago. They had a reporter. Actually, it was another one, uh, the Jerusalem Chronicle, or one of those. 
and they did an article on me. Uh, they had a reporter come out from Israel. I was in Belfast. He actually did a really good story, um, which, you know, I thought, awesome. You know, there's some truth telling going on there. The Israeli media can say all sorts of stuff and does say all sorts of stuff, including counter narratives from the peaceniks and whatnot over there. Um, but you'll never see these things printed in the Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post or the New York Times. So you actually have to go to the Israeli media where they have more free speech about what they're doing over there than we ever did over here and certainly in the West as a whole. So free speech, what, what, what is, why is free speech so important? Well, I'll tell you what, the suppression of free speech is what has dumbed down the planet to such a huge degree, especially America. Like, really, we, we could show idiocracy clips every night to accentuate the ideas uh, that we're putting forward or I'm putting forward here. We are stupid. We are collectively stupid. So freaking stupid. And you can thank uh, honest and intellectual, philosophical debates going by I don't know, the way of the, the big brick cell phone or something, they're like long gone. We don't have philosophy in America. We used to have debate clubs in uh, schools. Uh, you know, we did. Oh, they're gone now too. I think they've probably been replaced with uh, transgender studies or something. Um, or maybe, you know, I don't know. I know we need at least a month to study homosexuality. I think, uh, you know, we have a gay pride month. That's really important. You know, we got to do that. Uh, cause you know, it's just so important for, for our kids to, to know that stuff. And that free speech is imperative. If you wish to maintain any kind of serious debate, philosophical investigation and research to be able to expose corruption, um, and also allow ideas to be openly, uh, expressed and allow the public to go ahead and say or do what it wants with regard to those thoughts and words from people exercising free speech. Free speech is dead. They just in Maui, for instance, where I was those so quote unquote wildfires. Um, I'm definitely more wild than those fires. And those though, they absolutely cut out the, the media, you couldn't go in. Whereas you could go into a war zone in a combat zone as a journalist, sort of, I mean, they do let that happen and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you can't in the United States in the aftermath of a wildfire. What, why does a wildfire necessitate the ending of the first amendment? Why? And what does that do? Like when you can't have investigators, reporters, or just independent people who want to know, or maybe just go back to their home, and then they see stuff that doesn't quite square up with what the media is saying, and then they say that, well, maybe if you keep them from getting in there, then that, that would help reduce the amount of people who might collect some evidence or pictures or videos that would run counter to the free press that we have uh, expressed to us in the news the reason why this is all so important is because we don't have a free press we have a prostituted press and that prostituted press is propagandists that serve interests those interests don't control uh what i say when we move over to rumble so for those of you who love free speech uh you'll need to follow over to rumble if you love censorship, Big Brother, and the Orwellian idiocy uh, that results in basically America being sold down the river and it being completely tanked, and uh, if you like that, stay here on YouTube because we love that, don't we? We love a destroyed First Amendment and freedom of the press, and uh, we love YouTube. We just love what they do, don't we? We love you, YouTube, really. Really lovely. I'm so sorry, but I just got to kind of go be free over there and speak freely over there as much as I love you, YouTube. So bye-bye, YouTube. Over to Rumble we go. And I'll just wait till Marcus verifies that we're in free speech zone.